For the last time, this boy's name is John! Fine, John, return to your quarters. You go back to your bedroom, tiptoeing around this weird petroleum-based sludge. Now, John, respond to your friend unit. Tentacle Therapist is now an idle chum. Hey, yeah, I'm here. And not dead, I think. I know. I've been watching you scramble through the house like a lunatic. You should have answered me sooner. Aw, oh, man. Sorry. I was looking around for my dad and I can't find him anywhere. Have you seen him? No. I'm sure he'll turn up. We have more important things to address right now. Yeah, like... Where am I? I don't know that either, but I've determined your neighborhood was destroyed by the meteor. Wherever you were transported, it saved you from the impact. I've been reading reports in the news. Over the last few days, there have been many smaller meteor collisions with people's homes around the world, and they seem to be getting bigger. Yours was the biggest they've identified so far. Wow, okay. So then I guess if this is all the game's doing, then the point is for us to save the world? Perhaps. Then we better get moving and figure this game out! Yes, but wait. We should retrieve your PDA, yet again. It will help to keep tabs on each other while you investigate. I think I can get you closer to it if I can replenish our crisp supply somewhat. There may be a way to recycle some that we already used. Okay. I'll meet you out on the balcony. Wait! Rose! One thing. What? You never even wished me a happy birthday. Um, hello? I was working on something to send you, but I was running late with it. I didn't want you to think I believed meager well wishes alone would suffice for the occasion. That said, happy birthday, John. <laughs> oh jeez, that is silly. <laughs> anyway, thanks! First, take the fabric item on the floor there. The towel? Why? Oh, well, you're the boss. You capture log the towel. What now? Do as the purple text says! To the balcony! John makes his way to the balcony, per your awkwardly worded request. Wait! Take that! The blue wobbly thing! You whimsically decide to capture log the totem, which was used to create the apple tree earlier. John! Recycle the grist as was dictated by your cohort! John cannot do anything with the grist as of this moment. That is up to the spur player. I see! Yes, that will suffice. Rose deletes the perfectly generic objects. Six units of build grist are restored to your grist cache. Rose expends the grist to drag a new plank from the balcony in the direction of the PDA. John, run across precarious platform swiftly! John isn't sure about that. It's a long way down. Boy, I said make haste on the narrow catwalk! John is very mm -hmm. nervous about the idea, mm -hmm. and the strident tone of your commands is starting to make him a little upset. Fine, proceed as your level of comfort dictates. You cautiously walk within range of the PDA. Rose retrieves it. Now take it! You grab the PDA, launching one of the Harlequin figurines into the night. You can kiss that one goodbye. Just one arrow command will suffice. Thanks. Thank you all! Report. Most hats removed from danger. Ties next. Fedora Freak, you are in our thoughts, along with Pipefan413 and his enviable collection of pipes. GL Fedora Freak, salvage as many hats as is practical. Neighboring house struck by flaming projectile. In light of fire hazard, evacuating house of all expensive garments. At Pipefan413, status of health slash wardrobe. It looks like you're not the only one trying to locate your father after the disaster. These boring men are uninteresting. <laughs> John, are you okay? You seem a bit tentative. I'm fine, I guess. Since I got here, I feel compelled to do these weird things I don't really want to do. By some kind of voice I can't really even hear. I don't know, it's... it is hard to explain. Perhaps the early symptoms of an anxiety disorder, like post-traumatic stress? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Well, if you can pull yourself together, there are a few more things we should try. Like, prototyping the kernel sprite again, if possible. We should hurry. My laptop battery won't last forever. Okay, I will go back inside. No, don't do that! Hop off this ledge onto that car! What? No! That sounds incredibly dangerous! Now you're just being a pest! Which turnip truck did you just tumble out of, anyway? Who are you? Upon connecting with the client user, you, the server user, will be met with a control panel allowing you to manipulate your co-player's environment. 
You will find that you are allowed to deploy four items at no expense. Three of these are rather large machines, and one is a punch card. It's quite possible that you have already deployed some of these items before reading this. If this is the case, and you have activated the machine called the Cruxtruder such that it displays a countdown, you must proceed to section A100 of this walkthrough immediately. The life of the client user depends on it, and if your co-player has activated this device in your environment too, then yours does as well. But if not, please refrain from doing anything with the Cruxtruder, aside from merely deploying it. This will buy us some time to think things through properly and go over the basics of the game before you find your soft, easily punctured head in the jaws of the lion. As mentioned, there are four items to consider, each playing a role in a process which appears to have a singular purpose, to manufacture objects out of thin air. The designers of the game, judging by the language used, regard this process as a sort of alchemy. This may allude to complexities in the production process yet to present themselves, but for now the variety of objects you were able to create remains quite limited. The items in question are the Cruxtruder, again, tread lightly with this one, the Totem Lathe, the Alchemeter, and the Pre-Punched Card. I will describe how these devices work in conjunction with each other, and I will use the analogy of having a key made at a hardware store to help you understand. First, deploy all these objects in convenient proximity to each other. Be sure not to block doors or pathways with them. You can always revise the dimensions of rooms to make space for them, but I'd advise against this or even experimenting with the function. Doing so comes at the expense of build grist, a commodity which appears to be at a premium at the onset, and one you'd be best advised to save for later. Removing the lid signals the moment your life becomes a great whirling batshit pandemonium, somewhat resembling the chaos of an especially ethnic wedding. Somewhere, a soused uncle deliberately shatters china on the floor. Muddy livestock is decorated and then lost track of. The question, whose mule is this, at times can be heard over the din. This is now your reality. But aside from that, it marks the beginning of the process I am about to describe. The countdown begins, yes. Also, an entity called the Colonel Sprite is released. But neither of these things are all that relevant to this process, to my knowledge. More on these things later. What is relevant is the unlidded Cruxtruder's ability to dispense Cruxite dowels. It will dispense at least one, though I suspect it is capable of producing more given parameters I'm not yet familiar with. In my key-making analogy, these dowels represent the uncarved pieces of metal which the hardware store employee retrieves from a drawer or a rack and sets about carving into a key. The two following items are needed to do the carving. It is a simple Solidex card containing an item. There is evidence to suggest the specific item it contains is variable from session to session. The card I deployed contained a blue apple. Yours may be different. It should matter, hopefully. Additionally, the card, as you may guess, is punched, like one used with antique computing systems. The pattern of holes comprises data, which I believe corresponds to the instructions for creating the item the card contains. That it is pre-punched suggests there is a way to punch an unpunched card, possibly imprinting it with the data for the item it contains, though no mechanism for this has presented itself yet. But the data on the card cannot be used to create the item directly. There is a middleman. That middleman is the totem lathe. This is essentially the key carving machine. It will carve into your Cruxite dowel a pattern of grooves and contours, the sort which makes a key unique. The instructions for this pattern are supplied by the punch card, which is inserted into the lathe pre-activation to configure its chisels. Once the dowel is carved, you have a totem serving as your key, which can then be used to unlock the card item through the alchemeter. But at this point, I will diverge from my key-making analogy and switch to a barcode analogy, which is not a terribly strenuous leap to make, since the concepts of a key and a barcode are essentially the same. One being a unique pattern of grooves, the other of varying black lines. If you place a Cruxite dowel, carved or uncarved, on the alchemeter's small pedestal, its robotic arm will scan the contours with the laser, hence the barcode analogy. This is the machine's way of reading the data originally imprinted from the card and transforming that data into a physical object, though typically this is not done without expense, I believe. An uncarved dowel results in the creation of a perfectly generic object, which is a seemingly useless green cube. It costs two units of build grist to make, and I do not advise 
you waste resources on it. There appears to be many other varieties of grist, ostensibly used in combinations to create different sorts of items, which possibly offer some insight into the game's use of the term alchemy. But quite conveniently, there is an exception to this. Creating the item on the pre-punch card costs nothing. This is good because creating this item turns out to be essential. Now that you know this, you can in your own time begin the process. Once you initiate it, naturally there is no going back, so best be prepared. But you probably shouldn't drag your feet too long. As I mentioned earlier, this is your only means of escape. When you're ready, be prepared to follow the steps in the next section swiftly. So your crux truder is ticking. Do this to live. In the distance, meteorites fall with great frequency. The fire in the forest burns so hot, not even the rain is putting it out. Rose, check status of battery. Your laptop battery is alright for now, but it won't be for long. If the power in the house doesn't come back on, you can think of one last resort. The small backup generator stored behind the mausoleum. Rose, prototype sprite with Betty Crocker box. Oh. What? Oh man, you're going to use that? That sucks. What a stupid idea. We have to hurry along. I'm running low on battery power. But the cake mix? I... Ugh, that's so dumb. I doubt it matters. We might as well just use any old crap lying around. Fine, I guess. The sprite is playing hard to get. You guess that's what you get for originally prototyping it with something that engenders mischief and pranksterism. Do the potted vegetable instead! It looks delicious! Pipe down, you. This is Rose's decision, not yours. Rose, prototype sprite with sassaker text. <laughs> oh yes! Sweet! Now we're talking! See if you can distract it. I'll try to sneak up on it. John, flail about in a distracting manner. The sprite finds the distracting manner in which you flail about to be rather distracting. The pesky sprite eludes you again. In narrowly missing with your attempt to create the kernel sprite, you drop the massive tome. The entire house rattles under the astonishing girth of the book. In the other room, Nana's ashes dump onto the sprite, which is caught unaware by the dowsing. Inspect Hagash incident. 